In this podcast, I'm going to finish off one more Reynolds Law um, example problem, and then we're going to talk a little bit about osmotic pressure. All right. In this problem, you see that we have a, a solution of pentane and hexane. Um, and the pressure of that solution is 350 torr at 25 Celsius. So we're going to go ahead and write that down. So this is our PF solution. All right, and then it tells us that the vapor pressures of each of these, so we're going to call pentane P1, is 511. And hexane is 150 wants to know the composition, or in other words, the mole fractions of each. So we're going to have to use our big equation. So I'll expand it out, the Rhodes Law expand, uh, expand it out, where you have the mole fraction of 1 times the partial pressure of 1 plus the mole fraction of 2 times the partial pressure of 2. Okay, well we know that the mole fractions are going to add up to be 1 total. Okay. And we're going to have to exploit that fact to plug in these. But first, let's go ahead and plug in what we do have. Okay, so we're just plugging in all our values that we do actually know. All right, now we have two different variables to solve for here, which makes things a lot more difficult, uh, difficult mathematically. So we're going to go ahead and solve for x2 up here by subtracting um, partial uh, mole fraction 1 to the other side. So we're going to end up with this. So mole fraction 2 is equal to 1 minus the mole fraction 1. And we're going to plug that in to our equation and use that to help us solve. All right, now we're going to have to do a little bit of distribution. So this 150 is going to get multiplied in by the 1 and by the mole fraction. So we'll end up with 350 is equal to mole fraction 1 times 511 plus 150 minus 150 mole fraction 1. Okay, now we're going to combine like terms. So 511 mole fraction 1 minus um, mole fraction 1, 150. And that is going to give us, let me find my paper real quick. And that's going to give us uh, 300. Well, that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> I have 361 written down, but that doesn't make any sense. So 500 minus 150. 361, okay, it does make sense apparently. All right, and that's plus our 150 is equal to 350, and we're going to subtract that 150 over, so we got 200 is equal to 361 mole fraction 1, and then you're going to divide by 361, so mole fraction 1 is equal to 0.55. Now we know that uh, mole fraction 1 and mole fraction 2 have to add up to 100. So we can go ahead and figure out the mole fraction 2, which is 0.45. Okay, so there you go. That's what you have to do to solve that problem. All right, now we're going to go over here and look a little bit at osmotic. All right, here we see osmotic pressure. The osmotic pressure is, we're talking about osmosis. So here in this little yellow thing is the semi-permeable membrane, okay? Water or the solvent can move through, but the solute particles are too uh, big to move through. So you remember from biology that what's going to happen is the um, if you have two solutions, pure solvent and then uh, solvent and solute, water is going to move through to try to equal out the concentrations. Okay, so you're going to end up with a lot more on this side than this side, and then you can determine the pressure um, by the applied pressure to stop the osmosis process is equal to the osmotic pressure. So the pressure that you exert down that stops the movement of water is the osmotic pressure, the pressure that the solution is exerting to try to equalize out. Okay, um, 
what you see is when you add more solute particles, you see a lowering in the osmotic pressure, okay? So um, there are more of them over here, okay? So it wants to move this way more. And then the more of them you add, the uh, less pressure you have to add here to equalize it out, okay? And that's osmotic pressure.